Chris Putnam. Chris, welcome. Hey, Derek. Getting down to the, the situation that occurred in Orlando over the weekend, um, early Sunday morning, a gentleman who, uh, and I use the term very loosely, incorrectly probably, um, who called during his attack to pledge allegiance to the Islamic State, killed 49 people, wounded 53 others in, in an attack that the Islamic State gladly took credit for. Um, this uh, is sadly very timely with the release of the new book. Um, and you've done a lot of research, I know, and also consulted a scholar that uh, we've come to respect, Dr. Timothy Furnish, and the work that he's done, but other scholars as well, uh, into um, the background of this Mahdist group and, and what the Islamic State uh, stands for, what they want. Um, uh, now, first of all, I guess for people not familiar with the term, what is Mahdism? Well, Mahdism really is the belief in the Mahdi, who is a, a basically a human savior in uh, Islam. And you know, it's a really interesting belief. He's, he, you know, they also believe Jesus is going to return mm -hmm. and institute the kingdom, uh, just like Christians do. And so their eschatology is really based on Christian eschatology, from what I can tell. They, they really kind of modeled it on that. But it's interesting that this Mahdi character uh, appears in the Hadith literature only. You don't find any mention of him in the Quran. And uh, in the book, I make a pretty good case, I think, that Muhammad probably never said anything about the Mahdi, um, but the Hadith says he did. Now, why do I say that? Well, in the 6th, 7th centuries AD in Syria, where most of these Hadith compilers were, were living and where they were working around Damascus and those areas, um, you find uh, that there was a Christian pseudepigraphal work. It's uh, falsely attributed to the church father Methodius. It's called the Apocalypse or Revelation of Methodius. Mm -hmm. Now, Methodius didn't really write it. We know that now, um, but they didn't. And that most Syrian Christians believe this was a genuine, inspired revelation. Now, in this revelation, uh, it speaks of a final Roman emperor, okay? Mm -hmm. And this character is said to convert the world to Christianity right before the return of Jesus. And um, so he was a big hero, and everyone was looking for the final Roman emperor within Christianity. Now, at the same time, you have the Muslims in the same area, um, and they're hearing all this. At the same time, they're compiling the sayings of Muhammad, the, mm -hmm. the, the Hadith. And, uh, you know, I think what happened is they heard this and they said, hey, we need a counterpart to, to, you know, an apologetic against this final Roman emperor character. And this is where the Mahdi comes from. Mm. And, you know, a lot of scholars would agree with that assessment, that, that, it, that it's kind of a plagiarization, really, of, of that pseudepigraphal work. So the, uh, <clears throat> the beliefs of, of Muslims then... Uh not just in the Quran, which are supposed to be the the the, uh, uh, the, the holy book given to Muhammad by the angel Jibreel, Gabriel, mm -hmm. uh, but then the Hadiths, which, uh, as I understand it, um, are graded according to how accurate Muslim scholars believe they are. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, very accurate, uh, you know, strong or weak Hadiths, basically, um, based on the accounts of people who claim that they heard Muhammad say this, that, or the other. Right. So all of the eschatology is based on what other people say they heard Muhammad say, and then graded according to how reliable those right. are, according to Islamic scholars, through the centuries. Yeah, it, it's really um, nothing but hearsay. I mean, none of it would be admittable in court. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so-and-so said he heard so-and-so said, heard Muhammad said. <laughs> you know, it's like, really? Mm -hmm. um, and that's most of the details in the characters that we know about in their eschatology, the Jal, their version of the Antichrist, mm -hmm. uh, the Mahdi. Um, these guys are largely from the Hadith. I mean, you don't see anything in about the the Mahdi or the Zal in the Quran. Hmm. Now, the Quran does uh, feature the day of judgment. And it, it, it's pretty much the same thing you see in the Old Testament in the book of Daniel. You know, the dead will rise and be judged. That's in the Old Testament and the New Testament. In Revelation, it would be the final resurrection. But, of course, Revelation has two resurrections. Right. Whereas Islam only has the, the final one. So, but it is loosely based on all that. And I, I think it's derivative of it, um, my opinion. So, basically, they cribbed from this pseudo Methodius mm -hmm. and then created their own eschatology sometime after... Muhammad spoke all of the sayings that he was supposedly given by Gabriel mm -hmm. and that were compiled into the uh, various versions of the Quran, which were then weeded out to the, the one final version of the Quran. Um, now, Mahdism is, is uh, the, the Mahdi is, is a character who has different characteristics in mm -hmm. Sunni Islam and 
Shia Islam. What's, what's the difference between the Mahdi that the Sunnis are looking for and the Mahdi that the Shias are looking for? And so that depends on which Hadith that you refer to when you describe <laughs> the Mahdi, right? And the Sunnis have theirs and the Shia have theirs. The Shia is where this uh, legend of the 12th Imam comes right, from, right. that he's occulted somewhere in a different dimension or something. He's going to pop back up at the end times. And uh, that's a Shia belief. Mm-hmm. Now, the Sunnis are much more conventional. He will be a, a, a regular man. And, um, you know, and he will be born and just raised up and be a good Muslim and, mm-hmm. you know, probably get his doctorate and, um, you know, uh, studies of Islam and, and all those kinds of things. And this is what they looked for in somebody like Baghdadi. I mean, mm-hmm. he, he fits a lot of those prophetic requirements. An Islamic scholar who's well-trained right. in Islamic um, law and, mm-hmm. and the, 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 uh, the study of the Quran. But nobody's naming him as the Mahdi, but that's the sort of person they're looking for with the right record, gotcha. the right genealogy. And so that's who the Sunnis expect. So they don't expect anything terribly okay. miraculous. But Mahdism, okay, as an extension of the word Mahdi, is just the belief that he's coming very soon. Mm-hmm. And so ISIS, you know, is modest. All right. And they are that's what distinguishes them from a group like Al Qaeda. Mm -hmm. Osama bin Laden, he thought the times were short, but he didn't necessarily think it was going to happen during his lifetime. He was more interesting and interested in disturbing the West, Mm -hmm. um, you know, to terrorism and things of that nature than the idea of building a state for a worldwide caliphate. Now, uh, ISIS is really more interested in building their own state than they are bombing us, for mm-hmm. instance. But, you know, they'll, they'll go ahead and do that, too, <laughs> when they mm-hmm. have time. But they're, they're really their concentration is to build this worldwide caliphate so the Mahdi can come in and take over. And now they've already built pulpits in Jerusalem and, and, and other places all around the Middle East mm. for the Mahdi to speak from. Mm. So they're expecting him to come within the next few years. Now, I don't know how long that narrative lasts, you know, when he doesn't come. Mm-hmm. But that's ISIS's, that's the real distinctive between ISIS and the other terror groups. They're looking Looking for a geopolitical leader now to lead them to uh, glorious, victorious global jihad. They're, they're an apocalyptic death cult in the truest sense of the word. And they believe they can yeah. trigger it by mm-hmm. what they're doing, whereas the Shia... They can hasten it. Yeah. yeah the, the Shia believe it'll happen when it'll happen. It'll be right. a supernatural return mm-hmm. of, of this 12th month. In a sense, not that I'm equating uh, Christianity or Judaism with, with Islam, but it, it, in this way, it's similar to the... Um, difference between the expectations of the Messiah between Christians and Jews. Christians are looking for the supernatural return Mm -hmm. of the Messiah who has gone away but will come back, Mm -hmm. Um, whereas Jews are looking for somebody who is a uh, a scholar in Torah, who who is observant, and then who will rise up and lead them to geopolitical victory in the War of Gog and Magog. Mm Mm-hmm. And interestingly, uh, Islam has that same kind yeah. of belief, too. They also believe in Gog and Magog, but they, yeah. they kind of twist it up. And so almost all the features that you find in Jewish and Christian eschatology, you'll find some version of that within Islam. And so I really do believe that it, you know, they just copied it. Hmm. Um. So the, um, the, the danger of, of Mahdism, and this is something that uh, Dr. Furnish's work has really uh, helped me understand, is that uh, there have been a number of people who have claimed to be the Mahdi Mm-hmm. Through the years, most yeah. recently uh, in, in Saudi Arabia, and I forget the year, but it was uh, within our lifetimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there was uh, one in Sudan uh, who took over in the late 19th century, was responsible for the uh, uprising that led to it, it was documented, it, not documented, but fictionalized in the movie uh, Khartoum okay. starring Charlton Heston. Uh, but uh, there have been a number of Mahdi or Mahdi candidates throughout the years, just there as there have been a lot of um, messianic pretenders. Sure throughout history. Absolutely. And yeah, and it parallels that very neatly. I mean, there's been a few in Africa that just, you know, killed lots of people. Right, I mean, right. And there's a, a book I refer to in our book, uh, the, the Final Roman Emperor, is that uh, 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 Islamic scholar David Cook is probably mm-hmm. one of the top uh, Islamic literature scholars in the United States, has a book that catalogs all these Mahdi characters, you know, throughout recent history, um, really so we can learn something from it. I mean, it, it has caused a lot of injury and death and and uh, turmoil. So, you know, it's something that the intelligence community and the military needs to be aware of and Mm -hmm. and pay attention to, because even if you don't believe in Islam, they do, and they're going to act on it. Exactly, exactly. So for them, it might as well be true, because that's Mm -hmm. what's guiding their actions. Well, the title of the book, The Final Roman Emperor, um, obviously drawn from this uh, pseudo Methodius uh, work. Mm -hmm. Um, What, what, in your research into uh, the Vatican, which I know you've done quite a bit of, between this book, um, Path of the Immortals, Exo Vaticana, Petrus Romanus. Um, what 
how does the Vatican view this clash of cultures between Christendom, for lack of a better word, and um, what appears to be the next wave of uh, Islamic conquest? Well, yeah, that's an interesting question, and I could go several different directions with that. I think the thing I'll just tie in right now, because we've been talking about it, is that you know we talked about this last Roman emperor from pseudo Methodius, right? And so we get the Mahdi from there. There's also Roman Catholics picked up on the same piece of literature, and they have the great um, Catholic Pope. And it's based on the same character, the same piece of literature, mm-hmm. and it's very, it's still prevalent within Roman Catholicism. And it started in the Middle Ages. They believed there would be a French king mm-hmm. who would convert the world to Catholicism before the return of Christ. Huh. And it's still prevalent. You can find it on modern Catholic websites where they talk about this uh, great Catholic king. Uh, it's based on the same guy as the Mahdi. Um, and so Muslims and Catholics share belief in a common character. Not the same guy, but one's a Catholic, one's a Muslim, and they have the same function. And uh, it, it's really kind of, it's kind of troubling, honestly. <laughs> well, it, it, it kind of ties in with the, the research I'm doing for the presentation I'm going to give in July about how, uh, you know, all through, through, through the ages, the, uh, the enemy has tried to implant false ideas to convince people to behave in a certain way. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's true or not. Well, in fact, it's probably not true or maybe salted with a grain of truth to get people to believe it. But the mm-hmm. idea is to get people to behave as though it's not. It's a classic, the classic definition of a psychological operation, a sure. psyop. Sure. If you get people to believe something is true, they will behave as though it's true. Mm-hmm. And then you can guide their actions in a certain direction. And I think what's happening is a, what will ultimately happen is a, uh, a very violent and bloody war between two sides that are both firmly convinced that they are fighting for right. God. Uh-huh. And in fact, neither side will be fighting for God. Exactly. And, and the thing that's even, you know, if you think about it, you have, you know, big portion of the world's, you know, religious faith believers in Islam and a big portion in Catholicism. And they're all looking for a human ruler to bring peace to the world. Mm-hmm. Now, doesn't that set both of them up to fall for the Antichrist? I mean, it, it does. Yeah. It does. And of course, yeah. in, among Protestants, and you've got the, uh, the, the people who believe in dominion theology. Right. Who are looking for... Um, uh, so, someone who will lead them to reclaim the world because of a misunderstanding of mm-hmm. Psalm 110 verse one, where the Lord said to my Lord, remain at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool beneath your feet. They take that to mean that Jesus is stuck in heaven until we conquer the world in his I name. Right. Yeah. Um, disregarding verses in the New Testament that say God has already made his enemies a footstool for Jesus.